Okay, so I want to document this real quick, and it's probably not going to go quick, but basically the um, Cener uh, 756 Rescue uh, machine um, ultimately wound up being the belt bad, so that needs to be replaced. And that's a very uh, eh, not simple beginner's project to do. However, there's pretty good video online. There's probably some others, but this one's definitely Randy's a sewing machine man. Excellent, excellent detail. Um, for a general overview, that's that's more detail I think you'll find, unless somebody really, really nitpicks and goes down with. Have to um, probably purchase a service manual still to make sure you get everything correct. But I was looking at them like I'm reading out, you know, online, and I'm like, wow, there's actually somebody with a 758 wound up making this custom belt um, method where he basically spliced a belt, and he used needles, uh, little pins, see this splice at an angle, and then just ran a needle through, and then uh, went all the way to the head. Then this is the other side, and you can see uh, bent back the needles around the back, and he reported in the article that left the head, they lasted longer in the bend also. So I'm thinking, you know, that, that should work fine, you know. Probably could also use some other material. Um, I was wondering, this is the actual article. Um, where is this? Something like yeah, this one here, and then somebody updated it down below, the gentleman. He's uh, actually on some other, like T, seems like he has another name here. Where is that? Somewhere else I saw him. Yeah, that one. I think, uh, Mike Jenwood. Um, I noticed uh, elsewhere. Uh, quilt, quilting for him or something like that. Well, <clears throat> that got me thinking. This uh, video, uh, tire, wall, tire, uh, tire sidewall puncture. Because um, I had seen adhesives used for timing belts before the GT2s. And I'm like, man, I, I've seen other ways to adhere belts. And then over the years, you know, you kind of think back just to the sewing machines with the leather belts. Um, and even rubber ones with the treadle machines. And I've even seen it on not treadle machines, exterior belt driven machines. That are, are the round style belt. Where um, you basically just, you, you know, you punch a hole on each side and then either use some kind of thread, stainless steel, or like a little buckle, a staple basically, a staple to bend. But this material here <clears throat> looks like it's pretty good stuff, rubber weld, or I think it's also called um, scotch, uh, 3M scotch weld, I think it's called. Let's see, what's it show up when you... Yeah, 3M Scotch Weld. Now, yeah, what, read into the specs from the 3M site, because 40's thin, 100's thicker, and then this thickness also relates to timing where uh, they set up. But he's literally successfully, and this is, they're still running good, last I knew, and he really swears by this stuff. He's used it in some other videos also, um, where this is a sidewall puncture repair he's doing. Now, this is on a little ATV vehicle. It's not on your car, but still. That's probably some strong stuff. So I figured, well, let's look and see what the latest and greatest is. And this gentleman has uh, making, oh, uh, let's see, scroll down. Yeah, making custom length um, time belt loops. And he does a good overview of what he researched online and noted he is using this uh, IC2000, just C, rubber bearing CA glue, which I don't know if I'd buy into that as much. If you have neoprene, made the neoprene adhesive. He's wondering also about the hexane-based inner tube patch compound. Also, like I was thinking, too, vulcanizing would probably be the better, but you have to have, like, a metal form. You know, you heat it, and um, so what you see here, he does, like, a little overlap scheme, which gets down to where the... But, yeah, he, now he does, a, he does a form, so I was thinking you'd have to have a metal form, though, so probably like a lost resin method. And then cast in brass or something, then heating element, and then clamp together like this design is, and heat. And you might be able to actually vulcanize the rubber to make the bond even better. But he's going by, you know, he's saying this alone is good. So you can see, and then he clamps down eventually, and then here you go. I think he's a little off here. Probably could have cut in a little bit. I think this looks pretty obvious. That wasn't cut in deep enough. But you get the general idea. You should have cut that more deeper, personally, and got that up higher. Something might jump on there. But you get the idea. 
And then, like, I was also thinking, oh, this one didn't want to load, right? Let's load that back again. We're at five minutes. This article, like, I always like looking at the comments. Oh, I see it was another one. Else. Okay, so this um, article shows probably not the best way to do it. But, like, I was thinking in the comments, I was thinking, like the gentleman did here, or the other did with splicing, why can't you make it even more heavy duty? The only thing is going to be your limiting factors, your teeth wear out. But still, if you're worried about that, then it hold up. Or he's swearing by the after a year, last few reported, it's still holding up. So use the needles bending the heads. He didn't bend them and he snipped the ends last time, and that that came apart. So and I was wondering maybe if you snip it still, then use the adhesive. But he's he's swearing by bending, still holding up, holding strong. I think it's February twenty. One, so it'll be interesting. February 23 is still going. Um, I think it's last update was maybe March, February, or March of 22. But uh, this gentleman here notes, you know, and I was thinking, I've got some Kevlar thread. And I was also thinking, you know, I saw this belt and hose reinforcement yarn, hose reinforcement yarn, bond code adhesion. And then, uh, you know, there's fishing line, also I've seen used before. And actually, um, uh, 65 Ford has a video where he um, splices a snowblower belt, so basically making your own size belts, and he, you know, he's noted even there too, like I've seen, um, where you could basically punch a hole, a leather punch on each side of a V belt, and then <clears throat> wrap around. Uh, he used uh, wire, baling wire, but you know, you could use stainless steel thread or stainless steel fishing line or high test fishing line. So and that is available on the market. This is from Adafruit. So um, that I'm thinking more like, you know, also like what can I do custom pulleys, but then you're going to have to disassemble. But what this has lasted long and you never really see where they go bad. I'm like, you know, my next machine, I even noted in the 758 video, I'm going to be, I'll do that. I was thinking today I started watching this. Just to make sure I was confident I knew exactly out of time. Thus far in a Viking 6000 series, mine's a 6030 I'll be doing. I'm like, you know, this belt would be the perfect belt. I've never read anywhere where those belts have gone bad. Thing is, I was hoping there'd be like a new old stock somewhere you could buy or maybe some custom. But it uh, sounds like this is linen maybe. I don't know exactly, but it seems like you could use a range of webbing material or Kevlar. I don't know, stretching Though you might want to look at, you know, some, something doesn't stretch, you know, stretches the least. But I was wondering, how, how could you make a machine where it would, you know, like a sewing machine, but a stapling buckling machine that would do that cleat? And then, you know, you can make any custom size length you want, and then you just, you know, probably sew these together and then also cleat over it, and that should secure them. And these last a long time. It sounds like Senior even made some um, made in Germany machines where you use this design. I uh, guess it's like a cleat belt or something like that. I'm not sure. Chain belt. I don't know exactly what it's called. But Pfaff made some. Uh, Viking Asvarna, obviously, I noted. Um, and this is Alma. So it's one of those, you know, maybe for upgrades and improvements, which ultimately I want to research because I was thinking um, even if it's lost PLA method of casting new bevel gears for the gearbox for the hook, or other gears and sewing machines that you can only find plastic replacements, unless maybe some have an interchangeable machine where they still add metal, um, why not cast some, if not straight up just machine them eventually, and I'm going to look into that also. But this is another one I want to note, because I'm like, man, I know I've seen like welding them too, and I happen to look, and I'm like, oh, it's a polyurethane belt, where they have welders where you can weld the belt together and then you just trim off that extra material. So stuff's out there, um, and it's an easier way to uh, change a belt because if you watch a video on the 758 or other touch and sew designs, you have to remove a lot of parts just to get at to that uh, belt on uh, the upper part of the assembly, upper part of the machine that drives basically a needle and stuff. Um, needle bar and all that, you know. But... Uh, so it's a lot of work, a lot of time, and a lot of shops sounds like don't like to do it. Some are like maintaining the Husqvarna Vikings, there's lesser and lesser, fewer and fewer that are willing to do that. Uh, if even with some of the machines, if the, the shops ever did. So you might only find technicians that, on their own wood, and so you have, you know, not even 
Uh, there's very few that will service those. And I hate to see a perfectly good machine or anything else other than these plastic parts or the cheaper rubber belts, peeing the butt to service parts. Uh, maybe aren't cheap. You know, they're just a 20 year old, 20 life, 20 year lifespan. And you can update that to be like the antique type designs that are pre planned before the planned obsolescence time frame. So instead of having a 20 to 50 year life cycle, you know, even worse nowadays, maybe, or in certain periods, like in the 80s or even worse, late 70s. You know, you go back to the 1800s, really made in the U.S. quality that was designed to last generations, be invested in and passed forward for generations. So you just, you know, you don't need to buy all this stupid stuff and waste resources. It's really strange and scary to me in some days, especially being more conservative minded, where, you know, it's just liberal idiots that buy and throw away stuff or liberally pollute, liberally do things, and you get these crazies that are kind of like considered liberals with their agendas, and it's like it muddles up the whole system um, in regards to, you know, legal ways to go about, you know, I can't say what they're doing is wrong, but I don't know, it's, you get extremes, and it just doesn't seem correct, and I don't know how you want to look at the situation. I'm going to look at the situation and not wasting resources, because life is time and resources, and resources are mass and energy, and they're finite, so, you know, why make mounds of trash when you can reuse perfectly useful products that need some, you know, new parts to last longer or maybe even repairs so you can repair those parts so uh, they, uh, you know, last with what you got there other than some adhesives. So, <laughs> you know, I've seen it with uh, the 8640 Bs, uh, the 8640 HP spect um Signal generators, frequency generators, uh, signal generators that, you know, they have gears. So few people, maybe two in the world, that manufacture the brass gears, but a few have actually reported successfully using epoxy or adhesives to rebuild the plastic gears that broke. And, you know, those are, those are machines that are way more than sewing machines. Brand new, um, maybe not used nowadays, but when they were originally on the market, you're talking, you know, thousands of dollars, tens of thousand dollar machines. And, you know, there might be other machines out there that when you get into the laboratory test equipment or field operations type equipment, whatever it is, you know, you're talking potentially hundreds of thousand dollar machines at one time. You know, I don't know if there are millions. I don't think the generations were that crazy, but maybe inflation adjusted dollars. But I'm at 12 minutes. We'll let it go. Okay. Be safe, stay healthy. Until next time. Bye for now. Learn something new. Save, 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 and keep Christ with you. Okay.